Good morning, everybody. How are you? It is Friday. Well, I am back. Last night I couldn't sleep very well and I was thinking, I want to try some different colors for my next pour. I know I'd mentioned doing earth tones and I don't have any here at the house, so I'll probably need to order some or go to Michael's and get some pretty soon. But I was going to use some of the leftover paints that I had from last night's pour and add some extra paints to them. So I have here, this is um, Sapphire from Extreme Sheen Deco Arts, and it's mixed with the leftover um, Peacock Pearl from last night. So it's a full cup. I'm not going to use all of it, obviously. Um, it's one color. And then I have Deco Arts um, Purple Pearl, and it's an, also in a metallic. And this is just one Let's see. It's just this right here. So what I do, some people have asked, is that I I measure. I use these measuring cups. They're like um, medicine cups. I just got them on Amazon, and they're one ounce each. So I fill up an ounce of paint and then two ounces of Floetrol. And then I add a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium. So this color is leftover festive red and I added um, berry. So it's just a little bit lighter. Um, not as bright as the festive red was yesterday because festive red is festive. And then I have this right here. This is bright copper. And again, it's Decoart Dazzling Metallics. And <clears throat> I will show you this up close in a second because um, I'm gonna show you the consistency I use. And then I had some leftover white pearl, added some more to use between some of the layers today. And again, it's the same mixture of using one ounce to two ounces of Floetrol and a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium and then water to get it to the right consistency. So let me see if I can move in a little bit here. Pardon my socks if you see them. Let's see. So it, it's hard to tell in, in this point of view, but it's about, it leaves a very, very small mound and then it sinks. And that's the consistency that I typically try to work with. So, what I'm going to do is mark my corners as best I can. We're going to prep the canvas with uh, just some Artist Loft Acrylic Flow Black around the edges. And then we'll get started. So, let me move some of this out of the way. This is my level to make sure my canvas is, is about as level as I can get it. There we go. Looking good. Okay. So I've mentioned before, I, I use the black primarily around the edges um, to, make sure, to make sure that my paint will stick to the edges. I, I, my biggest pet peeve is when you have a great pour and maybe your paints are too thin, especially if you, have, if you have a bigger edge, a longer edge, and you see the white of the canvas underneath it, even if you're using a dark color. So I sort of adopted this theory. Don't know how accurate it is, but it works for me, or at least it helps me feel better about um, bringing my paints over the edge. So. Take a moment just to get this going and then we will do our pour. Hope you guys are having a good week and or going to have a good weekend. I think I'm going back to the garden shop this weekend to get a few more plants and plant them out in the yard. <clears throat> 
which I'm looking forward to because I haven't done that in quite a while. Okay. Pardon me for leaning over the canvas. Hopefully you don't see my bald head. And just this corner here. What I've been learning in doing these dump and swirls is that paint consistency is important. I, I, you know, it makes sense to me. I know that a lot of people um, are very good on measuring their paints and getting it the right consistency. Sometimes when I do that, I'm, I'm disappointed that it didn't turn out right. And <clears throat> even if I took my time to make sure that I've gotten the right amount of paint, so I know this is dumping paint off, but it's probably not as much dumping off that you would do in a normal tilting. It looks like a lot, but a lot of it also stays on the canvas, believe it or not. Now, sometimes when I've been doing several in a day, I have a big old mess around the pads, around the sides, and that's because of, I've dumped off probably two or three paintings. Then of course, if I scrape them, that's even worse. <laughs> so, okay, I think we are ready. And my biggest dilemma this morning is to figure out what order I want to pour the paint. Brush out of the way. So, let's see here. We'll figure it out. I'm just going to take all my stir sticks out. This makes it easier. Blue is pretty thick. Okay. Purple. And then the red. Okay, dope guys, here we go. Let's give it a shot. So bear with me. Let's see if we put blue back on top of that. I like the blue against the copper. It's like the only combination that looks good, I think. I just wanted to have a different metallic show through today, so that's why I chose the copper. And the rest of the colors are pretty much in the same family. I've got the blue, purple, and the deep red. Which I haven't used yet. Here we go. So for a canvas this size, you need about 20 ounces of paint. Um, but of course, since you have the one and a half inch edges, you need a little bit more. I think about another inch and a half or, or ounce and a half or two. So I know I've got plenty of paint. So. I say we give it a shot. So here's my black. It's Artist Loft Acrylic Flow. Um, they're black, and I think we're gonna <clears throat> give it a shot. Fingers crossed. Here we go. I like to swirl it to get the black as best I can over the edges of the paint. That way I don't lose my metallics when I dump it. And just kind of watch the weight of the paint the best I can, even though it's black. <clears throat> and 
this last corner, you can see it's already starting to react. Just enough paint to get it over the edge. Okay, we bring it back a little bit. <clears throat> set this down okay so what I can see is it's already starting to react which is great because that's what I want in my mind when I start to see it reacting before I put it down then I know I'm gonna have a decent pour um, because these are gonna start filling in there's some up here there's a little bit in the middle and then when I torch it, it pops the bubbles and it allows some of the paint to rise to the surface. So as soon as I dry my hands here, put it over there, <clears throat> and we'll do some torching. And I don't know if you can see it, but it creates these little speckles and these speckles um, will grow into cells in most in most cases. Okay, so I'm going to put on time lapse, and fingers crossed that we get a great painting. And we shall catch up with you in a few minutes. I might do a little bit of manipulating before I walk out of the room, but we'll take a look. We'll see what it looks like. Okay guys, I'm back. It's Dwight with Dwight Pours. I love the blues, one of my favorite colors. So to let you know what happened, as I started the time lapse of my first pour, I dropped one of my popsicle stir sticks right in the middle of the pour. So I cleaned it up and I mixed a little extra paint and I did this pour here on top of that one. So I apologize for that, but I wanted to salvage it the best I could. So you can see all the different layers of color with the blues, the reds, some good negative space, nice cells. Walk around over here. So, that is it for today. Um, I want to get some, go to Michael's this weekend and get some earth tones and do an earth tony looking painting. We'll see how that goes. So you guys have a great weekend and we shall talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.